Hello everyone, welcome to another video in this full stack Flutter development series. In this video, we'll continue to look at our restaurant API in an attempt to refactor it to make it more robust. As you can see here, all of our API calls doesn't account for authentication. And the issue with that is that all the endpoints to our backend requires a authorization header with a JSON web token in order for it to access the resource. And none of these methods accepts any form of token. And you might think that the best thing now is to, for example, add the token as a part of the method but the issue with that is authentication is a cross-cutting concern and if i should add a token to each one of these methods or calls what would happen is that i will have the token spilling over to every feature or service in my app that requires authentication and so the one of the best way to handle uh, cross-cutting concerns is to use the decorator pattern and to decorate the http client so that we can set up the authentication header from there without the methods without injecting it directly into the methods but the thing is we cannot use this client because we do not have access to its public interface and even if we do we would have to uh, implement a lot of methods to so to solve this issue what i'm going to do is to create inside the terminal another flutter package known as common so i'll go to the terminal and i'll go back to the root and here at the root i'll say i'm creating another package and this package i'm going to call common So I'll go ahead and create that and then I will have to open that inside of the workspace. So to open that, I'm going to hit Control R since I'm on the Mac. I'm not sure what the shortcut is on the Windows, but this will bring up the different uh, workspaces. And I'm going to go to the Food Ordering app workspace. And I'm going to say go inside of common, then hit So I'm inside the app itself that I want to start inside of this folder. So what I'm going to do is to cd into the common folder then start up Visual Studio Code fresh.
and inside this folder again I am going to hide all these things so I'll hide all these unnecessary files so now that I have hidden all of those files I am going to quit this So I close the window and now I am just going to open it here inside of the common folder. And so inside here is where I am going to create my own HTTP client which will be used across the entire application. Gonna create a folder shared API shared API infrastructure and inside here I'm going to create a HTTP client contract inside my client contract I'll have two methods for now I'll have a get method which accepts a URL and a optional header And I'll also have a post method. This accepts URL, a string body, and also a optional header. Now both of these methods will return another class that I'm going to create a HTTP result class. Now this class will have the data which represents the response body and a status. And this status I'm going to make into an enum that has either success or failure. To make these into final for a constant. So now here I'll say return a HTTP result. So that's my contract. No. I am going to create the client itself. So HTTP client. And I'm going to call it HTTP client implementation. Just so that the name doesn't clash with the 
HTTP client that's already defined in the dart.io package. So this implements my IHTTP client. Now this implementation is the implementation using the HTTP package from here. So I'll go and I'll get the HTTP package. I'll install that. Then I'll say client HTTP client get that client from there and here to implement these methods pretty simple so I'll say response uh client get the pass in the url and also the header then i'll see for the response i'm gonna return A new HTTP result which the data will be response body and the status being I'm gonna create a new method that accepts the response this private method set status which accepts the response so if the response status code equal to not equal rather 200 then I'm just gonna return failure otherwise return success and my post method is almost the same thing so I'm just gonna copy paste that and here instead of get I'll say post we have the URL we have the header and we have the body so that's the implementation of our HTTP client now we can go back to our restaurant module and go to our pubspec yaml file and here as a dependency I'm going to add my common
here I'm going to add the package, the common package. Then back to my restaurant API, I'm going to replace this client now with the IHTTP client from the common package. And as you can see, it is not there. So we need to export that. I forgot to export it in the common package. So I'll have to go back to the common package. I'll have to go to this file here, remove all this and say export. So I have to export both of those. And remove this test file here. Now if I go back to my restaurant package, I should now be able to access this HTTP client. As you can see, import from package common. Now everything is going to go haywire and now the refactoring begins. And also our tests, everything is out of what. But before we start changing all these API responses, I want to for this restaurant API, instead, instead of returning restaurants here, I want to return a page that has restaurants and other page related metadata so that the UI can know which page they're on and the, the limit. I also want to give the UI the ability to pass in the page size or to set the limit on the number of pages so that Instead of doing that from the server, the client can ask for any number of pages that it wants. Um, so I'll create a inside my API, I'm going to create a page. And this page is going to have the current page. It's going to have the page size. And also the list of restaurants. Inside my constructor, let's see, current page, page size, restaurants. I make all these required.
so now that we have our page we're gonna go to our api contract and here instead of return in restaurants i'm gonna return a page instead And I'm also going to say page size. So I'm refactoring the entire API here again. Not a list of page, but a single page. For find restaurants, it's a similar thing. Turn a page. Then for get restaurant and get restaurant menu, those can stay as it is. So now inside of our API implementation we have quite a few changes to make so for our find restaurants method we need here the page size and then we need to add the page size to the URL. So in this case, I'm going to say and limit equal page size. And so that creates the URL for our find restaurant. And then also, I want to make all these required. I'm also going to change all these responses to a result. So I'm going to hit command and F2 to select all. And I'm going to change it to result. Since we are returning an HTTP result in this case. So we have that. Go here. Then instead of a response, it's going to be a HTTP result. And now if result status is equal to status failure then return null no. 
otherwise decode the data. For this menu, this can be response. Actually, it needs to be a result. Then inside the menu, HTTP result, same thing here, result status, if that's equal to failure, else decode the data. So inside of our find restaurant, our method definition is no page. This should now return a page. So basically, wherever there is list of restaurants, I am going to refactor that to return a page. So now our find restaurant is good. Our get all restaurants. Here we need page size that's good or get restaurant Need result if that's equal to failure and return null, else the data. Then our get restaurant by ID. Well, he, here we need to also add the page size to the URL. So, and limit equal to the page size. So now that's that location we need. Or page size. Then here we need to add our page size. So and limit page size. So that is the endpoint for our restaurant by location. That's good.
So here we need to be returning a page instead. So I'm going to store this in a restaurants since we are extracting the restaurants there. And then I'll return a page where the current page is going to be the metadata from the JSON. So I'm going to say metadata page. And the page size is going to be also the metadata. That's the limit. And then our restaurants will be our restaurants extracted. So we return a page there. So now we have refactor all our methods to be used in the page and also to be used in our new HTTP client. Now we need to refactor all our tests. So let's get into it quickly. The first thing I want to do is to refactor our method here to return a JSON object that has both an array of restaurants and the metadata. So that's the array of restaurants. And in this case, it will be restaurants. And then above that, we'll have metadata. This will be a JSON with page, I'm going to just set it to one and limit. I'm going to set that to two. So there is our payload that we're expecting from our server to be like this. I also going to change the client to I HTTP client or rather instead of mocking this I'll mock I HTTP client So I'm going to comment everything to the last group. And I'm going to test group by group. So this should return a result instead of a response. So this should return a HTTP result. The data and the status. success. So our result should look like this JSON encode. We have a JSON object with the metadata, metadata and the restaurants. 
then you need to pass in the page size. So I'm going to rename this to page. So page restaurants should be null or should be empty. To the next test, again, instead of response HTTP result. This should be a failure. Uh, change this to page and I'm gonna say I'm expecting page is no So that's that. And here, just gonna say HTTP result JSON encode. All I need here is the method itself since it's returned in the correct format. And then Success. So if I should go ahead now and run these tests, let us see what will happen. So we are getting an error and that's because I have accidentally added the information to restaurants menu instead of restaurants. So what we have here in terms of all of this this should be inside of here So if we run the test again, now we have our tests passing. So I'm just going to go ahead and refactor the rest of the tests, guys, and then come back. So on refactoring the test, I realized that I was using get restaurant as singular instead of plural. So go ahead and change that in the API contract to say get restaurants since it's a list and also inside of the API implementation itself. So it's a get restaurants and there you have it. 
so now all my tests are passing everything is good so we have completed the refactoring of our api so our api is no good we are using our own http client so that we can add authentication to this client easily so that such a concern won't spill over into the other modules by passing tokens to every method so that is good so thank you for watching this video guys in the next video we'll move into creating our states we use in qubit and see you in the next one and remember the code is on github so you can go there and check out the code and try and refactor the tests by yourselves to see how that goes so see you in the next one